Use the divergence theorem to compute the flux of the vector field out of the region E that lies between these spheres, x squared plus y squared plus c squared equals one, and x squared plus y squared plus c squared equals nine in the first octant. The divergence theorem is stated below. To compute the flux, we want to compute the double integral over the surface S of f dot n ds, which equals a triple integral over the solid region Q of the divergence of the vector field f dv, which is expanded here on the right. This shows a relationship between a triple integral over a solid region and the surface integral over a surface. This theorem is a 3D version of the flux form of Green's theorem. Given the vector field f, we will let p equal y e to the z, q equal 9xz, and r equals one divided by the quantity x squared plus y squared times the arctangent of the quotient of z and the square root of the sum of x squared and y squared. We begin by determining the partial p with respect to x, the partial of q with respect to y, and the partial of r with respect to z. To find the partial p with respect to x, we differentiate y e to the z with respect to x, treating y and z as constants, which indicates the partial p with respect to x equals zero. And now we find the partial of q with respect to y by differentiating nine xz with respect to y, treating x and z as constants, and therefore the partial of q with respect to y is also equal to zero. And now we need to find the partial of r with respect to z. To do this, we'll be using the derivative formula shown below for arctangent u, which includes the chain rule. To find the partial of r with respect to z, we differentiate r with respect to z, treating x and y as constants. And therefore the partial of r with respect to z is equal to one divided by the square root of the quantity x squared plus y squared, and then we have times the partial derivative of the arctangent function with respect to z, where u is the input of the arctangent function, and therefore we have one divided by the sum of one and the square of z divided by the square root of the sum of x squared and y squared, and then we have times u prime, which is the partial derivative of the input of the arctangent function with respect to z, treating x and y as constants, which gives us one divided by the square root of the quantity x squared plus y squared. And now we need to begin to simplify if we multiply the first and third fractions, we have one divided by the sum of x squared and y squared, and then for the complex fractions have the parentheses. If we square the fraction in the denominator, we have z squared divided by the sum of x squared and y squared. I also wrote one as the sum of x squared and y squared over the sum of x squared and y squared. And now we'll add the fractions in the denominator of the complex fraction, which gives us one divided by the quotient of the sum of x squared, y squared, and z squared, and x squared and y squared. And now we'll simplify the complex fraction inside the parentheses. One over this fraction is equal to the reciprocal of the fraction, giving us one divided by the sum of x squared and y squared times the sum of x squared and y squared divided by the sum of x squared, y squared, and z squared. Notice x squared plus y squared divided by itself simplifies to one, the partial of r with respect to z equals one divided by the sum of x squared, y squared, and z squared. And now we can begin to set up the triple integral to determine the flux. Let's do this on the next slide. We have the triple integral over the solid region E of one divided by the sum of x squared, y squared, and z squared, dv. To evaluate the triple integral, we'll be using spherical coordinates, where we recall that dv equals rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta, and x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared. This gives us the triple integral over the solid region E of one divided by rho squared times rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Next, we'll simplify the integrand function and determine the limits of integration. To help determine the limits of integration, I've included the xy trace as well as a three-dimensional graph of the spheres in the first octant. So first, the integrand function simplifies to just sine phi. The limits of integration for rho are from one to three, which we can see on the xy trace here. And because we're only concerned about the first octant, the limits of integration for phi, which is the angle from the positive z-axis, is from zero to pi divided by two. And in the xy trace, we can see theta is also from zero to pi divided by two. And now we'll begin to evaluate the triple integral on the next slide. 
we first integrate sine phi with respect to rho. The antiderivative is rho sine phi. And now we find big F of three minus big F of one by performing substitution for rho, which gives us three sine phi minus one sine phi, which simplifies to two sine phi. And now we integrate two sine phi with respect to phi. The antiderivative is negative two cosine phi. And now we find big F of pi divided by two minus big F of zero. Recall that cosine pi divided by two is equal to zero and cosine zero is equal to one, giving us zero minus negative two, which simplifies to two. We now have the integral from zero to pi divided by two of two d theta. Integrating two with respect to theta, we have two theta. And now we determine big F of pi divided by two minus big F of zero one more time, which gives us two times pi divided by two minus two times zero, which simplifies to pi. Pi is the flux of the vector field out of the region E. I hope you found this helpful.